só uma mensagem para a Sônia. Tem uma mensagem aí. E daí eu vou com a Nova, que eu também vou fazer isso. Eu vou com a Nova para a classe. Hoje é... Hoje é... Como se fala? Today's um, chapel. So it's black and white, and we got a, we all got something to do. So I picked myself to pray. And I hope she don't have me for nothing else, because I would hate to say she's going to get embarrassed. I told you don't put me up to do nothing. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to go, and I just want to sit down. You know, I want to just listen. I want to go to class to learn. And I'm really learning. I'm learning at a slow pace. I can't be so quick, all right? I'm learning at a very slow pace. You know what? When we went to go take that test, she had a test. She wasn't there. But when we went there, they said it was going to be a test. I'm trying to think. Wait a minute. I'm trying to think. Correction. I think she did say that there was going to be a test. I'm not sure whether she said when it was going to be, but anyway, my whole point is, is that when we got there, it was a test. I had my bag. I could have left my bag home. But I'm ready. I'm not ready for the test. We'll give it a little test. But I am learning. See, I like to say, be in a class where I'm learning something. And I have to be at my pace. After all, I am 56 years old. My brain is not as fast. I can't, I can still type as fast, but I can't stay focused as long. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I prefer to listen to the Bible than to actually sit down and read it. Because the studying part, I would sit down and pull out the Bible and study it. But the reading part, the reading part is doing me very good with the audio. And I look so different. I don't know. Maybe it's the hairstyle, but I'm just, when the Lord tell me to help somebody, I help them. And when he tell me to leave them alone, I leave them alone. When I see that people don't want God's help, I don't push his help on them. He said go out and compel them. So what's name was talking about going out and getting them. So I'm going to start working on that. I want the Lord to lead me into how to go about getting people for his church. Getting people in the church. Lord, I want you to show me what to do. It's not, it's not just a matter of getting up, going going door to door, whatever, you know, recruiting people. It's like recruiting people for a job, you know. This was not something that we was taught. Bishop Anderson and Pastor Glover do not go outside and give out no tracts and, and have no services outside, give us no kind of outlook of how to draw the people. The Lord put in me to have the service on the outside, and every time it's time to have the service on the outside, it never happens. So... I just go on. When it's time to do it, I go and do it. And I allow God to to have it. I allow God to be in charge. And I tell him to give me the speaker. So, so far, the only speaker that he, there was somebody else that he had put in my spirit to use. But it's, I can't remember right now. And so right now, he got me using Elder Hurd. Got me using him. So, to bring to bring the word on the outside. I don't want to have none of my services on the inside. The concert we had, we have it a Friday night and we have it a Sunday night. A Sunday afternoon. I would love to have the Sunday afternoon service outside. But I mean, all the singing that we do will be outside. How much are the buildings? Whatever, and um, preaching to be outside. Yeah. 
Down. But we're work on it. We're work on it. I think one time I had the afternoon concert service outside. That's when I asked Jordan to preach. I think he's Elder Jordan now. At that time, I, don't know, I think he was Minister Jordan. I'm not sure. And you know, I'm learning that when you ask people to bring the word at your church and they say no, or they don't even tell you nothing, or you don't even hear nothing back from them, and then when you go to another church, you see them preaching. You be like, oh. okay, so I guess it's my church. It's either my church or it's me that they don't want to preach. Because I had somebody that was like that, and I asked them, like twice I asked them to come and preach at my church, and they were, and I don't think so, I don't think so. And then they was doing a panel, they was doing some workshop with people for the youth, and then they brought the word at the church, and I'm like, hmm, okay, so that's, that's what this is about. So. I didn't ask him for a while. I approached him though. I said, ah, oh, so what is this? You're preaching now, but you got particular places to preach at. And they started laughing and they was like, no, no, no. So I'm like, well, mm, well, I just like to do it in my church. Now I feel maybe what came to me is that maybe they pastors did not release them to go preach out nowhere. Then you say that, you just say no. No, I have not been. Really, maybe the next, the next time I ask somebody, I'm gonna be like, "Can you preach out?" I'm gonna put it like that, because everybody, you're right. Everybody is not, is not ready to go out and preach according to their pastors or their bishop. So, and I noticed that when people would come to me and ask me when I was a missionary, oh, I was getting a lot of offers when I was a missionary. Every time I turn around, somebody was asking me, you want to preach? Would you come out and preach? Are you allowed? And then when I would go back and ask, it would be like, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. So you know what I started doing? Okay, I wasn't ready. I think I was accepting at first. And then it came, right, I was accepting it at first. And then when I would go back and tell them that I was asked to preach out, then they would say, well, you didn't come to me. You didn't say nothing to me. So then, not realizing that they had done went through the different churches telling the different people not to allow me to preach unless I come to them. So when, when they would come and ask me and I would accept, they would say, make sure you go to your pastor. I would be like, okay. And then when I go to them, sometimes they'd be like, sometimes I got answers that, you ain't ready, you ain't ready. One time they say, you're a missionary, you missionaries don't preach out. I thought the word said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I thought, I thought that's what they said. I thought that's what the word said, but people got their own word. They got a book, but it ain't the Bible. It ain't the basic instructions before leaving earth. It ain't that Bible. It's do-it-yourself Bible. And why, and I, why? So that's what they go by. They go by what they think, the knowledge that they know, what they want done, and then they do. Anybody come with some, oh no, let's do it this way. I think it should be like this. They'll listen to you, oh yes. They got good ears for hearing. They hear you, let me put it that way. They hear you. I ain't gonna say they listen, cause listening, when people listen, you see a change. They do a change. So, I ain't gonna say they too much listen. They hear, they hear what you're saying. They hear your opinion. They hear your idea. And then they, they don't say nothing, but they don't approve your idea. And then when you ain't thinking nothing of it, now mind you, you ain't gonna forget your idea. It's just like somebody invented somebody, something and somebody else gonna do it. You know that's your invention. So you're not gonna forget your, your idea. Cause when you hear it again, you're gonna be like, all right, I'll talk to you later.